So we are entering into our study of World War II. This is by far my favorite uh, time period to study. There's just so many amazing things uh, in depth of stories and documentaries and videos and movies and uh, books out there about this time period. And so I've uh, really jumped into this over the years and learned more and more and just uh, got to see all the um, different parts and different sides of the war and all the heroes that were involved. And so this is a super exciting unit. Um, one thing we want to do is explore, okay, what caused World War II? We know World War I that we studied happened, and that was the Great War, the war to end all wars. And all of a sudden now uh, we're moving into another world war. And so when you think about this, it really goes back to the end of World War I. We've talked about this several times. The Treaty of Versailles the agreement that Germany was forced to accept, the terms that ended World War II, um, some of the major things were Germany had to pay back $33 billion in reparations, repair, repair. They're trying to, at this point, repair some of the damages that were caused. You can't put a price tag on things, but this price tag seemed to be way higher than Germany could even begin to um, afford, and it really destroyed everything, their economy. And, and so Germany also, under these conditions, lost land that it had gained um, and was required to kind of trim up some of their lands, and they lost that. And then Germany was not allowed to rebuild its army, army and really the weapons that it had and the um, troops that they had were extremely limited. So it took Germany off the map as far as a world power or uh, a threat is what the idea was behind uh, these consequences. And so um, that impacted Germany's economy greatly. And just like it was in a lot of the world, as we studied in the United States, there was a depression. And for us, the Great Depression, it was called. Well, in the 1930s, Germany... Um, was struggling with many of the same things. And so Germany lost all confidence in the government and their ability to help them. They realized that really the government didn't have the power to help them and didn't have the resources. So they were desperate. They needed help any way they could get it. You're talking about people starving, not having jobs, being hungry, and they were willing to really follow anybody that had a clear plan for an improved future. And so they turned to a new leader that promised to get them out of this economic hardship and disaster, to bring back jobs, to build up the economy, and to build up their army, their military, and become a world power again. And so people were so desperate for this that they were willing to really sacrifice their freedom because they invited in this leader that took complete charge as form of a dictator rather than be elected and having the people have uh, some of the power to choose. They gave that away and completely put all the power in the government and specifically one leader. And so that dictator is a leader who gains complete control of every part of the government and they appoint who they want, but in the end, they are the one in charge of everything. Okay, so how do you think this made the world a more dangerous place? Think about that. Having dictators all of a sudden pop up in countries that had complete control over the whole country and were wanting to do anything to build and become more and more powerful and to protect themselves um, as as someone who was a leader that stayed in office and stayed in power, they wanted to control every aspect of the daily lives of the people in their country. And so if you look at the difference here, our democracy versus what a dictatorship would be, that leader that popped up, as most of you know, was Adolf Hitler. And Hitler came to power making promises that they will see better times in Germany. And these people desperate for change uh, started to follow this man that we will find out later on was completely crazy and made some of the most uh, dangerous and murderous decisions that history has ever seen. Well, at the time, of course, the people did not know where things were headed, but they were excited in this new leader that 
were go- they were going to at least have an improved economy and protect themselves and build up their military. All these promises sounded good to the majority of Germans. Well, democracy here, just as a reminder, leaders are chosen through voting, as you know. Well, once a dictator comes to power, they don't want to leave. And so most of the time, dictators are not leaving uh, that power and passing it on to somebody. They don't agree to uh, voting, uh, any elections. And unless they're killed or stepped down or health reasons, like they're in charge for a long period of time. And so we had FDR, Franklin Roosevelt, uh, in the 1930s uh, as our leader. And then Hitler took over as leader in Germany. And so Hitler became the dictator um, and his political party was the Nazi party. And they believed in fascism. When you talk about fascist views, um, really here you're talking about, it's it's similar to the idea uh, of communism, but fascism is just completely authoritarian, meaning this person has all the power Okay. Usually it means we talked about nationalism. This leader is all about making the nation as powerful as possible and uh, forcing really to suppress people, meaning um, they take control and they demand like allegiance and they um, talk about every aspect of people's lives in that country they have control of. And so the economy and um, jobs and the banks and um, how the military, everything is run, you have this where um, people lose power very quickly if they have a dictator as their leader. And that fascism is like an extreme version of this. And so the government is controlling everything. People are not allowed to do or say what they want. The army has full control. Um, So it's a dangerous place to live. If you speak out against a government, likely you'll be thrown in jail or worse. And so it it becomes a very dangerous uh, situation for the people that are the citizens. And so we will study this more in depth, the idea of the Holocaust. But Hitler believed that Germans were better than any other people. And specifically, he put and focused um, all of the blame for many of Germany's problems, uh, he blamed the Jewish people, okay? He attacked Jewish people and said that it was their fault. Um, They had lived, you know, in Germany and throughout Europe for, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of years. Let you talk back to the beginning of the Middle East and where uh, Jewish people were forced out of their homes and really didn't have a a home, so to speak. And so they were spread out across Europe. Well, Hitler put all the blame on these Jewish people and said, they're the reason uh, for our troubles. Okay, it was a way to focus energy and give him something to kind of um, come up with a plan And unfortunately, this resulted in what was known as the Holocaust. And so really that idea is, by definition, a Holocaust is like complete devastation or destruction, uh, especially by fire. That's where it originated. And here, unfortunately, the Holocaust now is related to this time period is, is what people think of and refer to. This is where... We had mass slaughter and killing of European Jews uh, in what would be Nazi concentration camps during World War II. We'll talk about that, uh, but just uh, something that it's hard to even wrap your mind around how this happened and how terrible it is. But um, in the end, more than six million Jewish people were killed during the Holocaust. So we're going to look into that a little bit more, but just know right now that this Nazi party Um, came to power and um, other leaders started popping up during this time period, uh, the 20s, 30s, 40s, as dictators. Benito Mussolini from Italy was, um, just like Hitler, was a dictator and he promised to um, build up the power of Italy and they were going to attack and and gain land from other countries. And so, 
on the other side of the the world, really. When you talk about in the Pacific, uh, Japan also had a dictator, a young dictator. Their whole government was based upon the military. Their generals were the leaders of the government. And so Hirohito um, was a dictator in Japan. He planned to just take over all of Asia, starting with China. He started to attack. And so um, you have these dictators, very dangerous, and they were not content with just having their country. They wanted to take over more and more and get more power. And so together, they signed a treaty. Hitler and Mussolini first agreed to support each other, and then Japan eventually joined. And this alliance was the Axis powers. When we talk about the two sides of World War II, the Axis powers here uh, was Germany, Italy, and Japan. And so they started to each pinpoint land and target land to take over. And so uh, Italy invaded Ethiopia. If you talk about Italy moving into northern Africa and taking over land, Japan started to move into China and take over uh, that land by force, by military. And then Germany at first invaded Austria and Czechoslovakia, the neighboring countries, and started heading towards, they were not content with just that. They were going to keep going and taking over as much as they could through Europe. And so German forces started to get ready to take over Poland. And at that point, uh, Britain, Great Britain and France, uh, they had an alliance with Poland and with each other. They were together agreed, we need to stop Germany at this point. They warned Hitler that if they, he attacked Poland, then that would mean another war. And Hitler did that. And so Great Britain, France, uh, they became known as the Allied Powers, along with many other countries and eventually the United States, but not at first. This is 1939 to start the war. Once again, the United States was not involved. Uh, so Hitler ignored this threat, and it's September 1st, 1939, Germany entered Poland to take over the land, and so Great Britain, Britain and France, declared war on Germany. And so for the second time in just 25 years, a major war had begun. It soon would be known as World War II. Of course, they didn't call World War I World War I at the time. They called it the Great War. They did not no, and they hoped that it were, there would never be another huge world war. But unfortunately, the second one happened, and we're going to study different aspect of, a, aspects of this. But the United States did not enter originally, uh, similar to World War I, but we are going to explore just what was happening in Europe, in the Pacific with Japan, and in the United States. So super cool unit. Um, you know, war is, of course... Um, sad. There's lots of destruction and death, but there are a lot of people that made a lot of heroic, heroic decisions um, and really fought for their country here um, so that lots of people could have freedom. And so we'll be studying that over the next couple weeks here.